We are tackling some very difficult questions on today's episode. What do you do with a guy like DJ Moore? What do you do with some of these uh, beautiful options like Jameis with terrible situations? It's championship week. Stay tuned and check it all out. Foot Clan, it is championship week. You are going to be a champion, and you're going to need to know very soon where to go to get your trophy, to get your championship ring, to get your championship belt, to get all of the stuff to gloat over your friends. Where are they going to go, Andy? Uh, fantasychamps.com. Because they're a fantasy champ? Mm, makes sense. Oh, go to fantasychamps.com. Use the promo code BALLERS and be a fantasy champ. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast, coming to you from pristineauction.com studios with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. Excited to be with you once again. It's good times, good times. It's fantasy championship time. It's fantasy championship for the people time. Because yeah. today's show it's is for, for the people. It's for the people. I did notice when I was uh, I was checking out the old internets, social media, and it seems as though the NFL Network folk, you know, the other five teams that we played in the expert division. They seem a bit emotional. Mm, I understand. And maybe that was their downfall when they lost to the only non-NFL network contestant in their League One, which would be, of course, oh, Jay Grizz. <laughs> well, I mean, you know, they've got – they have a team of experts, those five experts. Yeah. Which, I mean, look, they, they played great. They did their best. I was, I was proud of them. Yeah. And in, if it was like an Olympic situation, there would be medal winners. Oh, they would get a from bronze their or crew. A silver, maybe. But uh, I just noticed that the reaction, it was kind of a, remember how Mike fake apologized to Amari Cooper? I do. It was very it was, poorly done. It was more of a like fake congratulations that we got. Yeah. From, yeah. From Adam. From Adam Rain. Yeah. I think he stayed home a day. Well, he had. I mean, you got to take the day off when right. you're upset by the fantasy <laughs> footballers coming in and trouncing all over you. <laughs> Wednesday, December 18th. Excited to be with you. Congratulations to Beth O. Beth O, who won the Nick Chubb signed jersey at FootClanGiveaway.com. There's a brand new giveaway up there, a signed black Sammy Watkins helmet. No lizards included. It is a, uh, it is a helmet made for the warm-blooded. Mm. But, uh, yeah, you can go get in on that. It's free to enter. Uh, that's an awesome piece it because is pretty have, cool because one it, it actually looks amazing it's it's not the normal looking uh, Kansas City helmets kind of like a matte black with the with the cool KC logo and uh, also then you have to explain it like why do you have a Sammy Watkins helmet are you a giant Sammy <laughs> Watkins why did it sound like you're like hawking a loogie at the end of his name now that's kind of how Watkins. It, it, that's how it <laughs> feels when you think about Sammy Watkins <laughs> I saw him hit the waiver wire Today, so I am in the championship of the CBS League, and I'm looking. I'm doing the drop it like it's hot, mm -hmm. like we prescribe here on the show. Check your waiver wire after they went through, and hopefully, by the way, yesterday you had a successful waiver wire day. I picked up Brashad Perryman, so I have him, and I ha I'm playing him in place of Chris Godwin in that league. And I saw Watkins hit, and it's still. And I, how do I feel about Watkins on a? You, you hate Sammy Watkins, <laughs> like you, like on a personal level. I don't know what he's done to you. I just start my rankings every week, taking him down a few pegs. Yeah. Cathartic. That being said, seeing him hit the waiver wire and seeing his name sit that, you're like, ooh. Well, I, I had maybe people, he has Maybe this is a week. I've seen a lot of people in their championship game saying, my opponent lost Godwin, and they're throwing Watkins in there, and I'm terrified. You're you terrified? The, the people that are playing against him. I would be a you, little terrified as well, because this is where the dark magic comes out. Right, which is <laughs> what you associate with lizard people. Yeah. Dark magic. Twitter, at the FF Ballers, the fantasyfootballers.com, the start sit tool. Check out our community at jointhefoot.com. We've got a foot cast this afternoon answering questions uh, from the foot clan, so you've got a double dose of advice today. 
Let's go ahead and uh, let's kick this thing off. Buy or Sell, presented by Pristine Auction. All right, we've got another championship edition. I guess last week was the semifinal edition. So we've got the championship edition of Buy Sell today. It's Andy versus Jason. This is Mono Imano in Buy Sell. Lev Bell, okay? okay? Lev Bell over 10 fantasy points against Pittsburgh this week. Are you buying? Are you selling? I am going to buy over 10 fantasy points. I think the matchup is difficult, but the volume is very, very similar to last week's Joe Mixon against the Patriots. Uh, the slight difference being Joe Mixon is more talented in today's day and age than Lev Bell. But I also think that the New England defense is better than Pittsburgh's by a slight margin. I can't disagree. I'm buying Love Bell over 10 fantasy points. Sometimes a revenge game narrative is less about how hard you try and more about how many chances you get. I think Love Bell is going to get a lot of them against Pittsburgh. And that's all it takes, right? I mean, just give him the rock. Now, could this be a revenge game for the Steelers? Because remember, when, when he left and left the the players high and dry as he just abandoned them that season, the Steeler former teammates were not happy with Lev Bell. I, I mean, maybe this is a revenge game of 11-on-1. That's fair. That's Watch fair. Watch out, Lev. Yeah, I, I imagine they'd like to keep him under 10 fantasy points. I, I'll, I'll bet you're right. All right, Dak Prescott, a top eight quarterback finish in Philadelphia this week. To give you context, the last four weeks for Dak, the quarterback 24, 9, 17, and 16. Mm. So calling it top eight, he hasn't done it yeah, in four weeks. That is a hard line. I have the decision in a championship game to go either uh, Dak Prescott or Matt Ryan at home against Jacksonville. Oh, okay. All right. And I've got I, them back to back in my ranking. I'm going Matt Ryan as of today at home. I like Dak. I would adore Dak at home against Philadelphia. I still think the top eight upside is 100% there. But if things go according to plan for this Dallas offense, I think Dak's at that 8, 9, 10 range. So I am selling a top eight finish. Yeah, I've got him number seven in my rankings right now. And I do think it will be difficult for him. I mean, when you're right on the cusp, there's, there's always players you just – you don't project that uh, this week uh, Baker Mayfield's going to go off and have three touchdowns and end up top five or something like that that will push a player down a few spots. But because of the matchup in Philly with the terrible secondary, Dak's been you know throwing the ball well this season. Uh, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna buy here. I th I think he will be top eight. All right. Are you? Do you have him higher than Matt Ryan? Right now, I have him one spot ahead of Matt Ryan, seven and eight respectively all right aj brown buy or sell 80 plus yards versus new orleans this week he has 80 yards in four of his last six games he's gone from being a, a an occasionally exciting player to a rather consistent one new orleans has given up the fourth most wide receiver fantasy points allowed over the last month but 80 yards that's a pretty high bar that's a very high bar and I think that without question, he's going to have Marshawn Lattimore this week. This is going to be a real test for A.J. Brown. This is a, a, a very good defender that I believe will shadow him. And this might be the first time in his NFL career where he's going to experience that. But he's a tank. When you say four of the last six games he's had 80 yards, three of those have been 135, 153, and 114 and during that stretch where he has been dominating, it's not just coincidence or broken plays. It's snap counts. It's routes run. It's targets. He had 13 targets last week. So I do worry about how he's going to fare against Marshawn Lattimore, but I think he's going to win. So I'm going to buy here. He will have Lattimore this week. So uh, I guess I'll go the other direction. I think he has an okay game. I don't think you're benching A.J. Brown, but, um, you know, if he puts up 65 and a touchdown, then I'm still wrong. Well, or I mean, I'd be right, right in that situation. Yeah. So 
I'll go ahead and sell. I'll do something different than you. Stephon Diggs, does he score a touchdown against Green Bay? He basically averages one against Green Bay. He usually does. I'm going to sell. Green Bay's defense, you know, the the stat is in eight career games against Green Bay, he's basically averaging almost a touchdown a game. But in eight career games against Green Bay, Green Bay's secondary has been bad. Now, Green Bay's secondary is actually – uh, very good. I think that Minnesota is going to be trying to run the ball with whoever the running back is. Um, and now you've got Thielen getting back in. He only played, I think, 33% of the snaps last week. So yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to sell here. I don't think Diggs gets in the, it gets in the paint. Yeah. I have to just, I have to go with the sell as well. I'm not going to bank on a touchdown. I mean, he's, he's not a player that's it's hard to. It's bank. not a 50-50 shot with him. I mean, touchdown totals over the past handful of years. I mean, he's had a one season with more than eight. Uh, that was last year. He had nine. But no, I mean, he's got five on the season. It's tough to bank on a touchdown. It's hard for any player out there to actually, if you're going to say, does he get a touchdown or not, your odds-on favorite bet would be not. Because- Unless it's like... You Unless know, it's Rob Derrick Gronkowski. Henry or, yeah, or you Derrick know, Henry or Marshawn Lynch. Exactly. Or, a guy that you, you know is getting 15 touchdowns on a season. So, no, I, you got to sell that. And the last one, Tyler Higby, does he have more than five receptions at San Francisco? I think that line might be low for what he's been doing. He's at 7-7-12 seven, seven, over the last three weeks, so it's an easy buy for me. I guess you're saying the line's really six, right, because you said over five? Mm-hmm. All right, I guess that's all right. I'm, I'm going to buy it, though. <laughs> I'm going to take Tyler Higby. He's just too involved in the offense right now. Gerald Everett's been out. I'm going to buy it. I guess with Mike on, we're just – we love each other today, Andy. Is there a line that you uh, we, that would change things here? Like if you went seven receptions? All Are right. you still buying? Uh, no, yeah, I, I will I – will, You'll sell seven? I'll, I'll take the under seven line. Will you take the over seven? I will take seven. Six under six and a half. Then, we're, yeah, we're, we've, there you go. We found it. We're okay. there. Yeah, there we go. I'll buy that he has seven, and you're underneath it. All right, that was buy or sell from Pristine Auction. Remember to check them out. Great holiday gifts, autographed sports memorabilia. We just did a big, huge uh, giveaway. Yep. YouTube.com/slash Fantasy Footballers. You can check that out. Use the code Ballers at PristineAuction.com when you register. You'll save five dollars towards a sports memorabilia purchase. <laughs> News and notes from around the league. Presented by Sleeper. Shocker, A.J. Green is uh, unlikely to suit up in week 16 and 17. I Mm. can't imagine we were thinking he would or would have played him if he did. But he's not going to. Now, I I have not tracked the AJ news AJ Green news extremely closely because he ha- he hasn't been playing this year and I wasn't in on him anyways but I see now that he you know it's a hamstring that he's limited with wasn't it an ankle issue that's kept him out for the year is this like a a different injury is he just falling apart well I know you'd like that narrative yes I would AJ Green says he's completely fine playing on a franchise tag this year so we'll see what happens. Yeah. He may hang around for another year. Uh, As, you being the A.J. Green uh, believer, would you prefer that he sticks around for the Bengals on a franchise tag or that he goes and signs somewhere else? I imagine that Andy Dalton will not be the starting quarterback for the Cincinnati Bengals. So in that situation, I, I think you're probably in trouble either way. I AJ agree. Green finding a new he if he finds a new home let's put it this way it'll be a multi-year deal for a lot of money that's what I believe will happen and if that happens then he'll be the anchor of a new team and so that might be a better situation than Joe Burrow in Cincinnati sure yeah. so uh, Giants have placed Evan Ingram on injured reserve with a foot injury ending his season which ended weeks ago really I mean it is disappointing. Hopefully, yeah. you you know a lot of people drafted him. They were counting on him, and you were able to pivot to maybe a Jared Cook. Maybe you were able to find somebody else, but first, uh, tough year. First five or six weeks, he was the tight end one before Austin Hooper took over, um, and then uh, he did what he's done his whole career so far. Short career, but he has to be labeled as an injury risk at this point. No question. 
Matthew Stafford is on IR, ending the season and guaranteeing David Blau gets to start this week in Denver. All those whispers in the wind and voices from the bushes and all that were wrong. But my favorite part about this is that yesterday news came out that Matt Patricia, his job is safe. They want him to do better. So it's like, Matt Patricia, we're going to have you back next year. Oh, Stafford, you can get on IR now. <laughs> you can, we, I don't need you. <laughs> You're gone. I need you next year. I'm going to be here. It would make zero sense to – put Stafford out there. I mean, no, you're, you're playing I, for nothing. In fact, you'd do yourself a disservice in truth with the draft. And uh, so David Blau, who has the worst passer rating over the last, I think, five weeks of any quarterback in football, travels to Denver, faces that defense that not, I am starting. Yeah, it's not going to work out well. Yeah, I, I signed them this morning to keep them away from Jamie in the championship game. I do not want Smart. the Broncos played against me. Doug Peterson said Jordan Howard and Nelson Aguilar remain status quo, which status, status quo is O-U-T. Yes. I was going to say their status is not good. No. So uh, certainly not. Uh, again, don't forget to drop it like it's hot. Drop it like it's hot. Drop it like a hot. Meaning look at the waiver wires once they've ran and look who was dropped. People do dumb things. Capitalize. Yeah. And, and just to be clear, releasing Sammy Watkins is not a dumb thing. That's no. a, that's a smart thing. Yeah, that's pretty pretty smart. All right, we want to thank uh, Sleeper, sponsor of today's news and notes segment. As always, don't forget to check out the Sleeper app. Going to pause for a second. Thank today's sponsors keeping the show going. We want to thank Zoom. When you use Zoom every day, Jason, it's just a little bit better. Because Zoom Video Communications, with the web's best-reviewed video conferencing service, is used by millions to meet one-on-one -on -one or hundreds at a time. If you work uh, for a business and you do video conferencing, you've probably seen Zoom before or used it. You've been invited to a meeting on Zoom. Um, we have many times. You know what you need with a service like that? You need it to just, like, work. Yes, just and it seems hard. It's like printers. Yeah, you just, just 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 work. Just let it work. Face to face conferencing. It's twenty. It's almost twenty twenty. Jason and Zoom video. They're the most proven, most consistent, most successful face to face conferencing around the town, around the world. It doesn't matter. You got flawless video. You got crystal clear audio. Kind of important. You've got instant file sharing. Um, they just keep improving and improving. Um, I'm a bit of a tech head. We like companies like you know Slack that we use around the office. Zoom is right in that category of always innovating, making it better. Visit Zoom online, set up a free account today. Try the most affordable and most reliable video communication solution on the market. Meet happy with Zoom. And Foot Clan, we want to thank the Capital One Walmart Rewards Credit Card. Earn 5% back at Walmart online with the Capital One Walmart Rewards Card. Games for the kids, headphones for dad, a laptop for mom. It doesn't matter. You get 5% back at Walmart online. You also earn 2% at Walmart in store, restaurants, and travel, and 1% everywhere else. When you want all that, you need the Capital One Walmart Rewards Card. What's in your wallet? Terms and exclusions apply. Capital One in a. All right, let's go ahead and uh, get Jason's pipes all set oh, to no. go. Oh, no. Yeah, you forgot, didn't oh, you? Oh, I did. Do you remember uh, how to do this? <clears throat> nope. Let's this do it. This is going to be real bad. Do you want Jay Grizz with you? Or nope. You? No, okay, here we go. He's going to ruin it. Mailbag. Mailbag! Hey, Brooks, how exactly would Jay Grizz have ruined that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's pretty rude. Yeah, that's yeah, pre-ruined. Sorry, Jay. <laughs> oh, that's pretty rude towards a. Uh, yeah. Yes. Never, oh. never be rude to a seven-foot bear. No. Even when he's cardboard. Ah, <sighs> well, thank you for stepping up, stepping well. in. Impressive. We want to help you when you're. How does Mike this year. do it perfect every time? Because some people are, they're just born with things like pitch and um. Interesting. Like vocal cords that are you know it's very special right he can do it anytime he wants that's like you know i'm jealous of that it's like uh people born with metabolism oh, okay you're jealous of them jealous as well of them as well 
If you have a question for the show, you can always go to the website, thefantasyfootballers.com. You can leave us a voicemail question, 302-464-TFFB. We're going to kick this off with a voicemail. Hey, what up, Ballers? Championship week. Quick question. Should I start Perriman over Cooper Cup? What do you guys think? Help me out. I need to bring that hashtag book that title. Thank you. One of the things we talked about yesterday on the show was you cannot have un- abated loyalty to players that got you this far. Every week is a new experience, right? It's a new opportunity, new matchup. You have to play the best players. Now, these players are back-to-back in my lineup or in my rankings this week. I think, if you, if you put it to me right now, I think I'm playing Brashad Perryman. Wow. San Francisco will have uh, Richard Sherman back this week. San Francisco is still competing for the potential one seed in the NFC and Cooper cup has been as unreliable an option that you can have for what? Five, six weeks. So when you look at that situation and then you see Brashad Perryman facing Houston, I am making the objective decision on championship week to play Brashad Perryman. Uh, and I apologize, uh, to this listener who will not get a definite answer, but I would be playing Cooper cup. And I, I totally understand the arguments. It's very difficult after a couple of down weeks for Cooper Cup. He, you know, if you look at the last eight weeks, he's he's in the twenties, wide receiver twenty something, Um, and that alone is on the basis of two really big games and a couple of duds in there. And but at at the end of the day, what matters is what they do this week, and I have more trust in the talent of Cooper Cup, who has done it many, many, many times. We, you know, I know they're getting Richard Sherman back, but they still have a lot of injuries. Last week, you had Matt Ryan as your start of the week against the San Francisco 49ers. Very difficult to run on, but they can be passed on right now. And I just have a really tough time Would in you a believe? championship putting my hopes and dreams to th- to that level. Like, you but lose I Chris think Godwin. You really should. I think you really should change. You think I should I think should you change? should convert your opinion. Yeah. Would you believe that Brashad Perryman outscored Cooper Cup last week as well with a healthy Mike Evans and Chris Godwin? Yeah. And not not this past no, week I where he finished two. number one, but the last two weeks? Yeah, I mean I, I I would believe that. Cup Cup has had a couple of down weeks. Six of them. On the season or in a row. No, he hasn't had okay, six. Okay, Arizona down weeks Arizona had fifteen points. But yeah, I'm I just think it's I think that's the perfect example. Because I didn't, I liked everything you said except for the part where you said I have a hard time putting my championship in the hands of Brashad Perryman, and that only comes from name. No, I, I, I don't think it's only name. It's, it's actual talent on the field. The matchup is clearly in Brashad Perryman's favor. Uh, the, the, the. Uh, it, they are back to back, so I mean, it's, it's very fair to have the other opinion. It's very fair to go Cooper Cup, and he has had a, m- a much larger track record of success. I just don't know who's going to catch the ball from Jameis Winston, who's throwing for 450 a game, other than Brashad. I, I will say this: if you need a swing for the fences play, do you feel like Perryman's more upside? Yes, I do feel like Perryman's more upside. You look at the last three weeks from Cooper Cup. Uh, you got 13 fantasy points, 12 and a half fantasy points, 15 and a half fantasy points. Those are fine, but they're certainly not, you know, blow up monster performances. So I do think the ceiling is higher, but I also think the floor is complete collapse for Perryman as well. Do you like uh, – you think Perryman can, can bust this week? I do. I mean, he had five receptions last week. So it, it worked out, but, you know. He also had an active Chris Godwin and an ex- active Scotty Miller last week. I think active Chris Godwin helps Brashad Perryman as the speeds are on enough. the outside. If you throw a couple other guys that you like into the mix here with those names, A.J. Brown, Terry McLaurin, and Michael Gallup, would you like any of those three more than Perry Minter Cup? Um, AJ I, Brown, Terry McLaurin, Michael Gallup. AJ Brown, I think, has played his way into being ahead of them. Gallup is really, really close for me. I like Gallup a lot this week. For sure, he, they have Philly. All right, let's go to Instagram with Will Greer getting the start. How do you feel about playing DJ Moore this week? He's my biggest question mark. And would you play Perryman or Anthony Miller over more with the new quarterback? Look, I, I don't know how anybody could have confidence 
with a brand new quarterback. You just don't know what you're going to get, right? Yeah, confidence you cannot have, but the talent of DJ Moore. I mean, you could argue DJ Moore is. I mean, he's he's played with Kyle Allen, who stinks. You know, oh, he, is that the new declaration? That, is that your final word? I mean, there was there was a time when Kyle Allen was the future. How has Kyle Allen been recently? Bad. Yes, very. No, I just meant you made a very objective like claim. You think Kyle Allen stinks for good? I do. I I don't. Yes, I mean, I I don't think. So then they should bring back Cam Newton or look to the future in some regard. I don't know that Cam Newton is their future either with one year under contract. But my point here is that DJ Moore has been good even recently, while Kyle Allen has been bad. I mean, he's. His targets and his yardage, he's he's top five in yards in the NFL this year. So it's he's such a question mark because the the would, targets Would will, you play Perryman or DJ Moore? Since we just brought up Perryman. Oh man. I like I said. I DJ, would play Perryman. Yeah, I think I need to move DJ Moore down in my rankings. I I, I trust DJ Moore, but it, you have no idea what a brand new third round Rookie on the road against Denver. Who looked terrible in preseason against Scrubs. It's yeah, it's that's that's really, really tough to to play DJ Moore. But I but I also think the talent is there, speed is there. He's a yards after catch guy. So it's like you don't need Will Greer to do much. Just get him the ball on a screen and let DJ Moore do what he does. So uh, he is he is like my widest range of outcome wide receiver this week. And a lot of people in championship games have DJ Moore. And so it's really just a litmus test of uh, do you have do you have the stomach to start someone in that situation? I think I would not. Yeah, I, it's just based on the options that you have. You you make a good point. Moore has put great games together with bad quarterback performances because it's pretty much him and McCaffrey on the offense. You, you realize since week nine, do you know? So this is DJ Moore's pace since week nine. This is with Kyle Allen, but he would have been on pace for 110 receptions, 1,625 yards, and seven touchdowns. It's just so hard to bench a guy like that. Yeah, and Allen has had really big weeks during that stretch, multiple top 10 weeks. Um, We'll see what he can do, what they can do this week. It's going to be very, very interesting. All right, let's go ahead and stay with the wide receivers. Hey, footballers, this is Nick up in Alaska. PPR, trying to decide between Will Fuller or Michael Gallup in the play. Thanks a bunch. Will Fuller or Michael Gallup? Did I hear that correctly? You did. That is a home run Michael Gallup to me. Um, while Will Fuller has the, the top speed to catch big bomb and maybe you'll work out, Michael Gallup's been great. I, I really believe that. Now, you've been disappointed because he hasn't uh, found the end zone in the last month and a half, but you know those, like we said earlier, you can't predict touchdowns the same way you can predict targets yardage and when yardage comes touchdowns eventually come look at Julio he you know he needed a touchdown based on the yardage he was getting he got two this week and the in the five games prior to this last week he's been averaging nine targets and over 90 yards a game is Gallup now you've got a plus matchup against Philly secondary that's given it up to everyone a howled Amari Cooper it's definitely Gallup for me all right, uh, I agree. I mean, you can't trust Will Fuller right now. Uh, I can't get over DJ Moore. I can't move on. I'm just looking more and more at him. Do you realize since week eight, the last eight weeks, where does he rank at wide receiver in fantasy football? Uh, top ten? Top five? Two. He's been unbelievable. Here's his fantasy finishes. 55 against San Francisco, terrible. 20, 10. <laughs> Thank you. That was good. I moved right past it. 20, 10, 15, 3, 14, 38, not great, but didn't kill you, 14. He's just been a beast. How do you sit him? It's, he's like a Jameis. You know, it's like, how do you sit a guy whose situation stinks when he has been so good? Yeah. Yeah. And I, I misspoke earlier when I said they played Denver. They play Indianapolis on the road um, this week. I think you're right. There's a variable there that wasn't there before. And we right. went through this with Cortland Sutton at one point in time, and it, it burnt you to question Sutton a couple of the weeks, mm-hmm. and then it didn't burn you because <laughs> – and that's the variable of rookie quarterback. There's problems, right? I mean, they, but at the end of the day, who's the best wide receiver to throw the ball to? DJ Moore. DJ Moore. Yeah. 
And what are the odds that they're playing from behind? I think pretty good. Yeah, pretty good. So garbage time has saved a lot of people. The Cooper Cup owners, the Amari Cooper owners, in recent weeks, garbage time, it still counts. I I laughed really hard because people can't handle garbage time. Oh, I and, know. And that includes you. Oh, yes, it does. But not to the de- – like, you can't handle it emotionally. But that's just fantasy football for you in general. It's more For me, it's about the rankings. Like – we put all this work into ranking players certain places and projecting what they're going to be and giving advice. And then when you're right about a guy and you're just – you watch the whole game and it's like I, I told everyone sit this guy, he sucked, and then in garbage time he gets extra crap. And it's like, oh, no, I was wrong. I let people down. But I, but I was right. That's what I – I can't get over that. I get it, and, and it's frustrating. But I was laughing because I, ha- I saw some people on Twitter talk about, like, we have the technology nowadays, Brooks, to uh, – to, to kind of figure out when garbage time is and not count it. Like, we're going to decide what garbage time is and disqualify the points from garbage time in the platforms. I'm like, no. Yeah, I pe- wouldn't go that far. People, this has become like a debate over the last few weeks because, you know, the frustration of fantasy football, the lows and the highs, the frustration of garbage time, the frustration of losing or not making the playoffs because you have more total points than another team and then you feel like that's not fair. You guys don't understand. Fixing that is the dumbest thing that you can do to the to the game. You don't fix something like that. That's what that's a feature. It's I believe that. Yeah. It's it's a feature of the game is to feel this way about it. I I completely agree. The bad beats, the hard head-to-head matchup, all of that it, it it's part of what we love. And we because we love to hate it. I mean, yes. genuinely, like you want the emotional roller coaster of that's the fun of fantasy football. And if you if you normalize everything, then it's like, OK, the team that you expect to win wins more often and ho-hum and, and you know, I, it, it takes the emotion out of it. I, I agree that that would be a wrong thing to fix. Side note, though. Yeah. Matthew Berry tweeted out yesterday what uh, what platform thing you would change. And so I went with what I've been saying for years and i i commented on uh his thread i would make quarterback rushing yards and passing yards all score the same you know quarterback gets 25 yards per point however he gets them because in the nfl it doesn't matter whether you get five yards rushing or five yards passing you get five yards you're halfway to a first down every single i mean the amount of comments i had that were all just someone hates lamar jackson someone lost to lamar it's all like Lamar Jackson comments left, right, and center. I've been saying this for years. I know you've been saying it for years. Oh, so you're putting it out there that this wasn't a this reaction not to Lamar reaction Jackson. reaction to Lamar Jackson. I love Lamar Jackson. And yeah. I, I love taking advantage of it. I mean, right now, if that's how fantasy is, I want that cheat code. But it's when been, there's a cheat code. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's, it's, it's true. I mean, that being said, Lamar Jackson is the MVP of football and the best quarterback in football. Absolutely. And it's because of his legs. Not just because of his legs, he's got he leads the league in passing touchdowns. Sure, but it, it, it's a, a lot of it has. He also just broke the all time record for rushing yards at the quarterback position. He just broke Michael Vick's record. It is a feature of Lamar Jackson. Yes, and I ju- I'm too old to want to reconfigure the way I think about all these quarterbacks to to satiate you. That's fine. That's yeah. fine. You don't have but to it's play been in my fun, league. It's been a fun discussion. Yeah, I mean, I I. I I get it. Honestly, it's it's ironic because everyone thinks it's because of Lamar Jackson. He is the first example to me that I can remember where I go, I don't know. He's kind of proving that it... Oh, Russell Wilson's in that category, too. His legs have changed the way that you view that kind of a player. Yeah, a little bit. But then you've got all the Tyrod Taylors of the past and the guys that are like, okay, they're not they're not really good, yeah, but they're top 12 Tim, fantasy Tim options. Tim Tebow used to do that, too. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, get, I get where you're whining from. Cam Newton. <laughs> He's great. Cam Newton was the MVP of football. Did you just use it? I, Cam Newton's another example. I think it makes fantasy more fun having those quarterbacks. Look, in I there. love fantasy, so, and that's, and that's it, the way it is right now. So, obviously, I got no huge problem with it. I'm just saying that would be an upgrade for me. Brooks, you're my favorite person today. All right, Amanda. Amanda has a question from Facebook. Trust A.J. Brown against Lattimore or use Waller in the flex? So that's an interesting question. Waller had a monstrous week last week, over 100 yards receiving, 10-plus catches. It is a PPR league. Full PPR. And while 
Hunter Renfro is returning. It is not it is not changing my opinion of Waller very much this week. So I would um I'd be looking at that situation. I'm it's very hard to bench AJ Brown because of the the upside. I'm definitely AJ Brown here. Uh you know, while I see the the issue here in Lattimore and the real test coming up for AJ Brown, he's been so dominant that I, you know, like I said earlier, I think he's going to pass the test. I'm ranking him as such as a top 15 wide receiver. But when you're talking about a wide receiver versus a tight end, when you look at the lines that you would set as to receptions, you're talking about a full PPR, what's the line for Darren Waller? Over or under four and a half receptions? Is he going to get to that five mark? You know, when you talk about a wide receiver, it's like, is he going to get seven receptions, eight? And the receptions, generally speaking, There's are no way I'm not playing AJ Brown. Brown. No, certainly. And I am a little, like, I'm not, I'm not moving off of Waller because of Hunter Renfro. But him coming back, there's a clear and obvious PPR cha- connection yeah. change in Waller's targets. When As soon as Hunter Renfro broke out and started getting on the field, high snap counts, getting targets, Waller took a dip. As soon as Hunter Renfro left, Waller was back. Yeah. Now Hunter Renfro's back. So. Yeah, and, and for what it's worth, Pro Football Focus only has the cornerback matchup against Marshawn Lattimore pegged as minus 4%. Well, that's because A.J. Brown's been – Exactly. Awesome. Exactly. He has been a beater of coverages and a tank among men, as you would say. Tank Bray Brown. <laughs> no, that's bad. And you didn't even say oh, it. I right. didn't even say it. Tank you were trying. J. Tank J. Brown? No. No. Tank, no, no. tank J. Brown. I mean, it is something that you're saying over and over again. It that's is. for sure. Well, what if I say it like this? Tank J. Brown. It's is a little that, bit better. It's a little better. It's a, t- it's a little bit better. <laughs> Thank you, Jay. Yeah. All right, uh, this question comes in off of Facebook from Paul Maris. James, is Kamara a trade target in Dynasty for next season? Interesting. So, I think he... He's in my head right now. He's not in a good way I by have your thought, face. Yeah, I've thought about Kamara a lot in that context. I don't want to cut you off. Say what you were going to say, and then I'll share my thoughts. So, I think... I, I'm. This is a curiosity in my head, but you have two different running backs who had a high ankle sprain and when they came back have really struggled to look like the same player this year and Saquon talked about admitting that he feels a little less confident on these cuts right now and so it's one of those things where I go maybe this was that injury and coming back and they they don't feel the same and next year Kamara and Saquon are going to be the Kamara and Saquon we see that's that's the curiosity in my head but talk about what you just wanted to talk about. Well, I, I've been thinking about whether, you know, because Camaro's not the same player right now. No, he's not. That, that's definitive. Doesn't look the same on the field at all. There's also some, there's been some major regression in the touchdown category, and it's may, maybe part of it's just his, you know, his production and ability, but part of it's just luck, too. I mean, last last year, his season was, was uh, historic in part because he was scoring so many rushing touchdowns. But it says something to me, like, Do you remember at the beginning of the year when I brought up that little unconfirmed Sean Payton story about Alvin Kamara? I don't remember. Where where they they talked about Latavius Murray and it was quote, you know, it was a non-confirmed quote that he said Kamara's soft. And here comes Latavius Murray, instantly signed him, brought him in to be Ingram. This team is never going to look at Alvin Kamara now that you have another year of injury concern and he's had concussion problems, they're never going to look at Kamara and be like, this is your backfield alone. Because they win without that philosophy. They've won with Ingram Kamara. They've won with Murray Kamara. So to me, there's not a situation where Kamara is on the same plane as Christian McCaffrey or Saquon Barkley or somebody who has the backfield to themselves, which means that the touchdown predictability goes down. If you're sharing some backfield work with somebody who's likely bigger than you, there's a fear. Yeah, but I mean, he was two years ago. He was sharing the backfield with Mark Ingram, who is better than Latavius Murray. And two years ago, he got 34 carries inside the 10. So far this year, and he missed a couple games, only 11 carries inside the 10 for Kamara. Last year, those 34 carries turned into 11 touchdowns inside well, I, the 10. All I'm saying is not that he's not good, just that I don't put him in the same echelon. So when you look at key, in a dynasty. Target category. If you target him, 
Don't target him like Christian McCaffrey. Don't target him as though you're buying low on Saquon Barkley. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, you're saying you're buying low on a second tier running back. So if you can't, would you get- rather have Dalvin Cook or Alvin Kamara oh, Dalvin in a dynasty Cook, league? Without a doubt. Okay. So what tier does that put Kamara in for dynasty leagues? Probably tier three. So that I mean that's a downgrade. Yeah. Oh, it's a huge downgrade. For, I mean, he he came into this year as a tier one running back. And the thing is about running backs is their shelf life is so short in dynasty leagues that no matter whether they're great, Christian McCaffrey will be less valuable one year from now than you think he is. Here's a crazy question. It came in off of Instagram, piggybacks off of that one. This is from Jalen Off. Alvin Kamara is on the road against Tennessee, Okay. Okay. Tennessee is a one point home underdog. It's a fifty one point over under. Nice. Arizona is on the road at Seattle. They're nine and a half point underdogs. It's a forty eight point over under. Alvin Kamara or Kenyon Drake after his four touchdown game. That is a very good question, and I don't like it. I don't like it at all. So- Alvin Kamara ha- finished last week as the running back twenty three. Against San Francisco, the uh, he was. Fantasy! Every yeah, use of that in this game has been negative. Yeah, that's very bad. Twenty uh, ninth against Atlanta. Obviously, Drake was the number one on the week with yeah. four touchdowns. That's you know he's done that a couple times this year where he's put up huge touchdown the numbers. The two weeks prior, he was the thirty first and forty second running back. So he has not been great. He just had a great game. I'm going to still go with Kamara, who is. Look, I love Drake. I mean, we that that's been established over years. But I'm going to go with the higher over under, the higher implied team total and the better running back over the last several years. Okay. I'm going Kamara. Where, where do you I think it's a tough decision. I, you got to start one. I know. It's a tough decision both teams on the road. I think I'm with you. I think I have to side with Kamara in the better offense. The Cardinals' offense is it, part of what happened in the preceding two weeks. Is not it was just a bad offense. Yes, Kyler Murray has one of the lowest passer ratings in the NFL over the last five weeks. Thankfully, David Blau is there at the basement to soften the landing. Yeah, you'll never get to the bottom, Kyler. Um, but but yeah, I think you have to side with the better offense in that situation for predictability's sake. All right, Instagram question: Are you starting James Conner with confidence this week, and would you play him over Lindsey? Pittsburgh is fighting for their lives, but they're in New York facing the Jets. Philip Lindsay's against Detroit. Should be a, a just a gorgeous matchup. They're at home. But I'm playing James Conner, yeah, barring setbacks in practice. I am as well. You, you saw him really be used in a rotation as they eased him back in. But then he is so much better than their other options. I don't think – I think they – they need to be careful with how much they use him, but he got a touchdown this last week, yeah. and and that's the re- the touchdown is the reason. Like Philip Lindsay is awesome; he really is. He is an awesome running back, but for fantasy, he's not getting it done because his team isn't getting it done. The touchdown opportunities aren't there. He's not even necessarily their goal line guy. They could come in and bring Royce Freeman in, which they have, yeah. And so when it comes to who's more likely to get a touchdown, that's James Conner. That's who I'm playing in my championship. And he's just a great friend of the quarterback out of the backfield when you need him. Like, I would definitely count on Connor more involved in the passing game than the way Lindsey's been involved lately. Certainly. So, um, we want to thank today's studio sponsor, Pristine Auction. Once again, here's the latest uh, auction that Brooks has picked out from Pristine Auction. A Josh Jacobs signed Raiders speed helmet, $74.93. Use the code BALLERS when you sign up. Did want to say one more thing, though. Okay. Now, whether you're brand new to this show, maybe you've been with us for a long time, uh, I'm, this is this is a, a roundabout way of giving you a shout-out, Jason. Oh, I But one of the great. most important things to this show is accuracy, right? Nobody, um, I, I, other than me, obviously, nobody in the industry gets everything right. Right, right? you do. And uh, other than, yeah, that's what I said. But, um uh, and they don't really get close, but we want to be a show that is objectively more accurate than the rest of the things that you can consume and pay attention to. It's what we put into 
um, all of our tools on the website and the Ultimate Draft Kit. We want to bring consistency and accuracy to the space. Championships. We, championships. Like it's, You play fantasy football to have fun, and you have more fun if you win. 100%. And that's kind of how this show is built upon. We, we like to entertain you uh, either on purpose or on accident. Most of the time, I'm doing it on X. Yeah, my, you're, you're, like right now, yeah. like your shirt has a giant like chalk mark on it for no reason. I don't know why that is. I don't know. Do you even know what that is? No, it's idea. a giant blue chalk mark. Well, it, it, it marks the. Do line. you wash your clothes? This is how tall my son is. I mark it on my <laughs> shirt every year. We and so we do take a lot of. <laughs> you mark it on your shirt. Yeah, just to see how. Tall yeah, no, that makes sense. Um, we take pride in accuracy and stuff like that. On this show, we put a lot of truth and effort in uh, truth. We put a lot of truth into it. <laughs> we, we put a lot of time and effort into that. Um, and like I said, it permeates the stuff we do. So while this is kind of a toot toot, it's also more of a pride thing for me to say that last year we were the only show, with the only media entity that had multiple experts inside the top ten of Fantasy Pros's accuracy rankings, mm-hmm. um, where there's over 130 plus experts ranked. Uh, and this year, we are we got one week left. Oh, it's the last we week. We got one more big week, but we are on the precipice of repeating that accomplishment. Now, Jason is sitting at number five on the year. Huzzah. I'm sitting at 11. So I got to break in this week. Yep. Um, and last year, we did it. And Mike's been on fire. Mike's got been number, on fire. He was the number two highest ranked guy this last week. And five last week. So um, I just want people to know. That even though you laugh at how you know, we're morons. Oh, I'm so stupid. We are very dumb, and there is a <gasps> cardboard bear on the set. We do pay a lot of attention to this and want to get you those Ws. And so, Jason, congratulations on a magnificent year. Thanks. You too, buddy. And because you say so much wrong stuff that yeah. it's really – It's hard to take me serious. It's really hard to look at that ranking and believe it. Right. Like, it, I, I, I live my life <laughs> by the idiot savant moniker <laughs> okay as it could you gonna write that book one day idiot savant a tale of fantasy glory <laughs> i like Written it by someone other than jason moore <laughs> i like it thank you for listening today we'll be back with matchups tomorrow a reminder there's saturday games this week but matchups over the next two days we've got some starts of the week mike's got his starts of the weekend too so we'll talk to you then Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers. Oh, Foot Clan, and a, a little final reminder, Jason. There's nothing like meeting face to face. It's true. And there's nothing like Zoom to make that happen or across town or around the world. They tie together all of your communication tools, video conferencing, phone calls, group chat, webinars, all that stuff. It's how business gets done. These tools save you time. They save you money. Visit Zoom online. Set up your free account today. Meet happy with Zoom.